Matata. Hakuna Matata, everybody. It means no worries. My name is Roger. I'm one of the pastors here at Reality Church. And this summer, um, well, when Jesus was on earth, he asked a lot of questions. And this summer, we're trying to answer some of those questions. He didn't ask those questions because he didn't know the answer, by the way. He just wanted to see what you thought. And so today's question is, why do you worry? And so I'm going to try and answer that question for you. Also, in addition to that question, you can text in questions that I probably won't be able to answer, but I'll do my best to answer. Um, and so uh, you can text them in. I think the number's on the screen. Or, yeah, you can go to our app as well and uh, text in questions. So, um, why do you worry? So in my lifetime, I have had one panic attack, okay? And um, prior, uh, prior to experiencing it, like anytime someone would tell me about their panic attack, you know, I would usually start with, well, that's just not logical, you know? That just doesn't make sense. What were you thinking? Like, I mean, th what were the chance? What are the chances of you actually getting attacked by a shark? First, you live in Nebraska, right? <laughs> Second, you live in Nebraska. But, but that's the thing, right? Logic and reason don't move us from panic attacks or worries. It doesn't move us to peace. It doesn't. It doesn't help us relax. Uh, reason. Reason rarely moves someone from worry to peace, but I believe you can move from worry to peace, and today I want to help you make that move, um, because you can. You can move from worry to, to peace, um, but before I start, do you guys want to hear the story about my panic attack? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a chair. Um, this story is best told uh, from a chair, so I'm going to just bring this chair up here. All right. Um, there we go. So, I need this back. I love, I love uh, snorkeling, right? So I have this friend, Dr. Little. He's like, man, if you love snorkeling, you should scuba dive. It's incredible. It's, it's so much better than snorkeling. You'll absolutely love it. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So my, my amazing wife, she gets me this gift card so I can take a scuba diving lesson, okay? And so I'm super excited. I show up. It's like a two or three hour thing. And um, I get there and they start showing. Uh, the first part is like classroom time, okay? And so they, keep, they show these videos. And in these videos, again and again and again and again and again, they basically tell you, that if you don't do these 100 things exactly right and in the correct order, you are most likely going to die, okay? Like, I didn't realize scuba diving was literally the most dangerous thing you could do in the world. I'm like, I should have just took tightrope walking lessons. It would have been safer, right? Um, so anyway, so um, we get done with that part of it, uh, and, and now, it's, now we're going to go put on all the gear. So we put on all the gear. We're standing on dry ground. And, um, you know, I got, the, I got the thing on, and I'm breathing, and I'm like, oh, okay, this, this is not so bad, right? Um, and I'm, I'm feeling good. And so now we go in the water. And so we get underwater, and we're not under there very long. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I don't think I'm getting enough oxygen, you know? And so I'm like, ah, I'm starting to breathe really fast, right? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. There was like 20 rules about how to breathe, and I know one of them was don't breathe fast, you know? So, I'm, so then I'm slowing way down. They're like, no, no, no. They said don't go too slow either. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I have uh, literally convinced myself that I'm about to run out of oxygen. I'm going to pass out, and I'm going to drown right there. Like, I have convinced myself that I'm, I'm literally moments away from dying, right? And, um, and so I'm telling this story to another friend of mine, Carl, and at this point he interrupts, and he's like, well, like, what did they do? Like, did someone jump in and grab you? Like, how did you get out of it? Because obviously you're alive, you know? And I'm like, well, I stood up. I was only in three foot of water. <laughs> you know, he had that same reaction. No empathy whatsoever. <laughs> I literally thought I was dying, and you, you guys laughed. That's okay. It's all right. Why do you worry? 
Why do you worry? We're going to look at the passage that contains that question. Uh, it's Luke 12, 22 to 31. And so we're going to, I'm going to read that whole uh, passage for you. You guys are welcome to follow along on your phones uh, or if you got the Bible with you. And also it will be up here. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read through that whole passage. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some observations. I got an application for you guys. Uh, and then I'm going to pray about it. And if that seems like, oh, I think I've heard that before. It's basically the SOAP Bible study message, which I know a lot of you already are using. It's uh, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And, and if you aren't familiar with it, it's a, it's a cool way to study the Bible. It's, a, it's an effective tool, I think. And uh, if just email me, roger.graber.reality.church, and I will send you a cheat sheet so you can get started using SOAP for your... Uh, for your uh, Bible study, and I think, it, I think you'll find it very helpful. Luke 12, starting in verse 22. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable than any birds. Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? And if you can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's, what's the use in worrying about the bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you all you need. So a few observations um, from this passage. The first one is Jesus considers the ability to add a moment to your life a little thing. Now, okay, so I eat right, I exercise, I don't do crazy things like go scuba diving, and my life, I can maybe I can extend it, right? But when it comes to that moment, that moment at the end, can I even add another breath? No, I, I don't. Not that I'm aware of. And yet God considers adding a moment to your life a little thing. And the reason that I, I think that, that he considers that a little thing is because in the, in the perspective of eternity, a moment in our life is, is minuscule compared to eternity. And in addition to getting us to not worry, I think this passage is also wants us to start focusing more on the eternal, the things that last a lifetime, like, you know, people or, uh, that are eternal, like people and souls, and, and to not spend as, as much time worrying about little things like food and clothing, which is the second thing, life is more than food and clothing, and I think we know this, um, but we still spend uh, time worrying about this. But what God is saying is, man, focus on the eternal. Don't, don't just think about, worry about the day-to-day -day things. It's the eternal things um, that, that we need to, to think about the most. Uh, in the Bible, there are stories of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness. And during this time, he taught them this principle by giving them manna every day. But if they kept enough manna for the next day, it would rot and it would stink bad, you know, like chicken in your garbage can in the summer that wasn't cooked. <laughs> Worry is tied to a lack of faith. And um, I kind of wish that there was a way to sugarcoat this one a little bit because it seems kind of harsh, but it's also very clear. Worry indicates that we don't trust that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he promises to do. Um, God wants us to put our trust in him for every circumstance and every situation. No difficulty is too big for him. And when we worry about tomorrow, 
what, what we're saying is, God, I don't know if you're going to be there with me tomorrow. We're concerned that he's not going to be there in the future to help us take care of what may, came, may come up in the future. And, and again, in Matthew 6, 34, Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow. But the universal human tendency is to do just the opposite, right? To anxiously focus on the future. To worry about the future instead of realizing that no matter what happens in the future, God will be there with us. If you do not believe in Jesus, you can expect to worry. Um, if you do not believe in Jesus, if you do not believe that he is who he says he is, that he came to earth and lived a, a sinless life, that he died on a cross to pay for our sins, that he rose again to conquer death, that he, that he did all of that for us, and that if we believe that, we can have eternal life with him. And, and believing in Jesus may not instantly move you from worry to peace, but it does make it possible and much more likely. And, and so I would just encourage you, if you have never believed in Jesus, if you've never believed in, in who he says that he is, guys, today is a great day to do that. It's a great day to believe. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Guys, if you don't believe, all you have to do is believe, and God will give you eternal life. Uh, at at uh, A week ago at Reality Kids Camp, we had seven kids believe. Yeah. I'll pause for cheering. This section, very active in their cheering. This section... Come on, let's pick it up. We got this. Yeah. Guys, that's incredible, but that's the thing. The gospel is simple enough that a kid can believe it and have eternal life. And often, uh, all, all we have to do to believe. Now, one of our next steps, once you believe here at Reality Church, is to get baptized. We uh, had a kid from cap, uh, camp that uh, believed that got baptized the first service, we've got another baptism this service, and, and maybe you've never been baptized. Maybe you've never taken that next step where you've declared publicly that I believe in Jesus. Guys, we got everything that you need right here this morning to make that happen, and there's some folks out in the lobby that would love to talk with you and uh, help, help you take that next step of publicly declaring that you believe in Jesus. And so... Uh, Think, think about doing that if you haven't yet. All right. <clears throat> if we seek God, he will give us everything we need. And I've, I've had a lot of conversations with people who have prayed for things they wanted, and God didn't answer how they wanted or give them what they wanted, and then they questioned if God cared or if they lacked faith. And I would say, from personal experience, God cares, and it wasn't a lack of faith. The prayer, my prayer didn't get answered because of my lack of faith or because God didn't care. God said he will give us everything we need. And sometimes we get what we need and what we want confused. And I know, uh, I know that, I know you knew that, know that, but sometimes we just need reminders, right? God expects us to not worry. So multiple times in the Bible, he instructs us to not worry. He says, don't worry, Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry about anything. Just don't worry about anything, right? No, uh, worry doesn't change outcomes. Worry's not helpful. Just stop worrying. And you're probably saying that doesn't sound very empathetic or helpful to tell me to just stop worrying. I worry about everything. And you telling me to stop is not going to help me stop. And so I... I want us to talk about this a little bit because I don't want to come across as like I don't care about your worry. Um, I want to help you move from worry to peace. Jesus wants you to move from worry to peace. And guys, it can be done. It's possible. Um, and in fact, it's likely if we will put our faith in Jesus. Jesus knows. Like, So here's the thing. He, he knows that we don't have uh, just this, this perfect life, right? He knows that we're going to have troubles. He knows that there's going to be circumstances and situations that can cause us to worry. 
we live in a broken world. We live amongst uh, a, a sinners, right? Like there's just like there's just bad people. Sometimes we're the bad person. Um, the Bible promises trouble. To quote Jesus himself, in this world, you will have trouble, right? So he, so he's like, okay, you're going to have trouble, but don't worry. So how can we do that? Um, how can we follow his command to stop worrying? Because it doesn't seem possible to not worry about anything. It doesn't seem possible to control my, my worry. It just... but. But guys, I don't think Jesus would tell us repeatedly to not worry if it was not possible for us to not worry. So I believe we can move from worry to peace. I'm going to read a quote to you uh, from a book called Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown. Because, um, you know, I know like we're in... People like, okay, like, well, what does, what does science say about this, right? Here's what science says about worry. Worry is described as a chain of negative thoughts about bad things that might happen in the future. What really got me about the worry research is that those of us with a tendency to worry believe it is helpful for coping. It's not. Believe it is uncontrollable, which means we don't stop worry, don't try to stop worrying. It's helpful to recognize that we absolutely can learn how to control worry. Guys, you absolutely can learn how to control worry. You don't need to be a worry wart. I think that's a really old term. I don't know if anyone uses that anymore. But you don't, you don't have to be a worry wart. You can move from worry to peace. And here's how. This is Sorry, Philippians 4, 6 to 8. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And so God's desire for us is peace, not worry. And, and this passage contains two simple steps to move us from worry to peace. Two steps that if practiced daily will reduce your worry. The first one is pray about everything, okay? Pray about everything, not just some things. Every, like pray about everything Every single day. Tell God what you need. Thank God for what he has done. And that's really the second part is express gratitude to God for what he has done. I think gratitude is so underrated, guys. Uh, gratitude is an antidote to worry. It's an antidote to entitlement. It's an antidote to depression. It's an antidote to greed. The list goes on. Guys, gratitude is is going to remove a, a host of worries from you. And that's what God wants us to do. Every day, express gratitude to God for what he's done. Um, there's also a lot of scientific research that backs up the fact that um, gratitude is an, an antidote to worry, entitlement, depression, greed, all of those things. Um, Guys, if you want to worry less, if you want to move from worry to peace, two steps, pray about everything and express gratitude to God for what he has done. I also, I want to talk about this real quick too, because I also think there's this myth um, that not worrying means you don't care, okay? Okay. Well, you mustn't care about it because you don't seem worried about it. I would say that if we don't pray about it, we don't care about it. Okay? Not if we don't worry about it, if we don't care about it. I um, love my family. I care about my family as much as anyone I know loves and cares about their family. But I don't worry about my family 
because I know that as much as I love and care about my family, Jesus loves and cares about my family even more than I do. And because of that, he is going to care for them in ways that I can't. And so, I mean, in good times and in challenging times, I, I don't worry. I pray. I pray for my family. I, I, I just think that, um, I, look, I know this sounds simple, right? Um, pray about everything. Express gratitude for what he's got. Uh, express, <laughs> express gratitude to, to God for what he's done. I get it. It sounds a little too lollipops and rainbows. But I just want to tell you from personal experience, I know this works. Uh, guys, memorize Philippians 4, 6 to 8. Uh, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. You know, over the, I would say over the past, I don't know, two to three years, uh, for me personally, it's probably been like one of the roughest stretches uh, of my life, pro professionally, uh, personally, health-wise, family, like just, it, you know, I felt like I lived in a fairy tale world for like 55 years, and I always wondered, like, Roger, if you hit, if you're hit with tough times, are you still going to have joy, you know, is this stuff you're preaching still going to, still going to hold true, and guys, I'm telling you, this works, Pray about everything. Be grateful. Be grateful to God for what he's done. And I'm telling you that I have a peace now that the world doesn't understand. I have a peace that even I don't understand. It's unexplainable to me how I can have this peace if not for my relationship with Jesus. Um, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna re I'm gonna leave this with you, and it's a direct quote from Jesus in John 14, 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't worry. Guys, God has this gift for you, this gift of peace that defies our explanation. There's, it's unexplainable. I don't understand it. But I've experienced it, and I know it's real. Guys, pray every day about everything and give gratitude to God for what He has done, and you can move from worry to peace. I'm going to try and answer some questions. Is stress the same as worry? I don't know. I, get, I, get, I see one of my counselor friends. Is stress the same as worry? No. That's all I can answer on that question. <laughs> Shannon will be available right here after the service. Come, come talk to her. Um, you know, so I've... I, I love reading books, and uh, amongst my favorite books to read is how, how our mind works and how all these functions and all the things going on. But um, so stress is not the same as worry. Uh, my guess is that, so like stress is probably like outside factors, like I'm starting a new job, um, you, know, I, uh, you know, I bought a house, and now uh, I don't know if I can afford the mortgage. Like those, those to me are maybe stressors, or I'm moving, or uh, you know I'm getting married. You know my son, my kids are going off to college. Like those, I think are stress. Like that, that stress. And I would guess that worry is like us worrying about how that's going to happen in the future. Like worry is, is kind of, I guess, by definition, I'll just kind of maybe reread that a little bit. Worry is described as a chain of negative thoughts about bad things that might happen. And so we get stressed out. So then we worry um, about the results. Is that okay? I got a thumbs up from Shannon. If, if you want more about this, you're right over here. All right. Just, just be, don't make eye contact with me now. I might call on you next. 
do you ever recommend people that worry seek mental health assistance or is prayer the only answer? So I am a firm believer in that it's okay to have Jesus and a therapist, okay? Like the, the one does not exclude the other, okay? Uh, a therapist can teach you skills to deal with uh, worry, um, but also Jesus can give you a supernatural peace that is unexplainable. I think the two work together. I think they go hand in hand. And also, like, um, where, like, God is the creator of all wisdom, right? Like, so um, it's, it's not like, um, you know, therapists or whatever are just like coming up all these things. I believe, coming up with all these things in a vacuum. I believe that God is, is the creator of wisdom. And so, uh, you know, when I, when I needed a, a, a stint a few years back, not only did I pray about it, um, I actually had a doctor that knew what he was doing insert the stint, right? I wasn't like, um, I, I don't even know that I could have ordered a stint online. It's probably good I couldn't have, or I probably would have tried doing it myself. Uh, I mean, there's lots of great YouTube videos, right? So how to put a stint in, you know? So guys, Use the tools that God gives you, but I, so uh, in my lifetime, okay, when, when I was a kid and most of the way growing up, like, it was literally only pray about these things, right? Like, that's where the pendulum was, and it seems like over my lifetime now, like, the Jesus part of, of uh, this has kind of been eliminated, and now it's like only the, the therapy side, Right? I believe, I believe it's in somewhere in the middle. I believe that Jesus is a key part of it, but also therapists are incredibly helpful, you know? And so it's both. Yes, do whatever, do whatever it takes to, um, to get the mental health assistance you need. But don't do all the, the therapy things at the expense of, of prayer. Okay, do, do both of them, all right? <clears throat> if God doesn't want us to worry, why did he allow anxiety and depression and panic attacks and doctors to treat those with medications? Oh, boy. Where's the microphone to give Shannon? <laughs> um, so... This, yeah, I, I know that God doesn't want us to worry, okay? I know that he gives us a way to not worry. Um, I know that sometimes anxiety and depression and panic attacks and other disorders are caused by chemical imbalances and they require medication, you know, in the same way that some people have high blood pressure and it requires medication. Like, I don't, I don't know. Is, could we just get the questions from the first service? Like, I felt like I kind of had a handle on those. Uh, uh, so anyway, I, I don't, I guess... Come talk to me, because I, I don't necessarily know exactly. That seems like a long one. Did you complete your scuba diving lessons? You know, the instructor begged me to give it another try, but there was a trail of gear all the way out to my car. Like, no, I have not. And in fact, the next time I went snorkeling, I thought I was going to drown also, and I was in a foot of water. So the snorkeling thing... That is over. That is, that is history. That one I could answer. How do you not worry when diagnosed with terminal cancer? Um, so, I, 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 think I, can, I think I can answer that honestly from personal experience, okay? And so, um, when Charnel and I were first married, and this was like, I don't know, a long time ago, mid 80s, we're, we're driving to North Dakota in the middle of the winter and we, we get stuck in a snowbank and we are in the middle of nowhere. 
and there's uh, the temperatures is uh, 40 below zero. The wind chills are close to 100 below zero. There is not a house within five miles, and it's midnight, and no one's going to be coming down this road until eight in the morning. And um, if then, uh, the road is, is going to be blocked by the time morning gets here, and we are stuck in this snowbank, and I'm shoveling, and I'm doing everything I can to try and to try and um, get us unstuck, right? And, and nothing's working. At one point, the motor on our car starts on fire, and so I'm throwing snow to put the fire out on my car motor. Like I'm, the gas is like, going, you know. And so even though I grew up in North Dakota, I know all these survival techniques, and I'm doing everything I can, there comes a point when it is blatantly obvious that my wife and I are going to perish in that car. And it was, uh, we're sitting in the back seat, and uh, we prayed, we're holding hands, and we're, we're honestly, like this is not like the scuba thing. Like I know that we are four to six hours from freezing to death right there, if if not less. And so, um, and so I know what it's like to think that your time on this earth is limited. Like I knew that I was down to four hours, maybe six, you know, if we huddled well enough, um, you know. And so I know what it's like to to, uh, to have a diagnosis that says you've got a very limited amount of time to live. And the reason I know that Jesus can give you a peace that makes no sense is because my wife and I experienced exactly zero panic. We were at complete peace. You know? We had no no worry, like no panic, just this peace that we we're about to meet Jesus. And so I know that it's possible to know that you don't have much time to live and, and experience peace and to not worry. Because you know what? We weren't worried. We were not, we weren't worried. And it's, that's unexplainable by any standard other than Jesus gave us that peace. Now, obviously, in the end, we didn't die like we fully expected to, right? Because as I was praying, God said, I want you to give this one more try. And I'm like, God, I've been shoveling for an hour. I've been pushing for an hour. We've already been stuck at this point for an hour and a half. I go, but you know what? If that's what you want me to do, I'll give it a shot. So I go outside, and, and um, I literally, God gives me the strength to pick up the front of my car and walk us off the snowbank, and we get to safety. Now, I know what you're thinking, Roger. <laughs> nope. I hate lifting weights. I've developed this by 60 years of never lifting weights. So the only way that car got off that snowbank was because God supernaturally gave me the strength to get it off and preserve my life. So I know no matter what situation you're facing, God can give you peace. You can move from worry to peace, and he will help you get there. Um, and also, like, I... I'm, incredib I, I'm incredibly s sorry about your cancer, um, your terminal diagnosis. I know it's heartbreaking. I know how hard it must be. But I also know that God can give you the peace to face this in a way um, that will honor him and somehow give you joy. Let's pray. Dear God, 
I know that you want us to move from worry to peace. God, and you, you give us the tools to, to be able to do it. You, you show us the way for us to move from worry to peace. And so, God, help us to trust you. Help us to pray every day, to give thanks to you every day for everything you've done. And God, help us to, if we, if we need help to get started down this path, Give us the courage to seek professional help. But God, also help us to remember to rely on you. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray.